Cool. If everybody can rename themselves, if you are uh, in our district, your club name. If you're from a different district, if you can put your district name. And if you're a guest of a Rotarian, we would love to know uh, who you are and say hello to you. We would like to welcome everybody uh, from District 5870 Central Texas Zoom Series, all of our District 5870 Rotarians, and all of our Rotary family from around the world. Thank you for being with us today. It really means a lot. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, District Governor Jim Henry would like to say a few words. Jim? Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Well, y'all know the last week has been particularly stressful for us all, but with the continuing effects of the coronavirus pandemic and what is now happening in our local communities and all over our nation. I just wanted to say how thankful I am to be part of an organization like Rotary that embraces respect for all of humanity. I deeply appreciate all of you and all Rotarians as we strive to stay connected with each other, as we continue to be people of action, and as we continue to play service to all above anything else. You know, our world and our nation now more than ever needs Rotary and all that we stand for. I want to thank you all for being the great Rotarians that you are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. You know, um, like we said last week, you know, it's hard sometimes to say, hey, I'm going to get on and I'm going to do the work that's needed. But whenever we show up in a room full of Rotarians, it's family. And it really, really just touches me that I have all of you that I can be a part of, be with, and do something good in the world today. So thank you very much. Um, before we get started, Amber, you're gonna go through some housekeeping. Yeah, I think we're all getting to be pros at this now, but just in case I wanna go through our normal housekeeping, I wanna point out to you that up in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you have the choice to be seeing speaker view, which is just my face right now, or gallery view. And if you s switch that to gallery view, you'll get to see everybody at one time. So that's a nice little feature. Down in your bottom left-hand corner is where you can mute and unmute yourself. Note that I have already muted everybody, but if you need to be unmuted, you can do that. If we get any background, I'll mute you. You also have the opportunity to turn your video on and off, but we really like seeing all of your faces. So if you have your video on, keep it on. <laughs> there at the bottom of the screen is also the chat box. I know a lot of you have already found it because again, we're already off to a great start and everybody's chatting perfectly there in the chat section. So that's fantastic. Um, I think the reaction button is one I haven't talked to you guys about before, but there's the reaction button and I can give a little thumbs up if I like what whoever is saying or a little clap hand. So note that, that reaction button is down there in the bottom right hand corner. Good job, Marie. I see you. <laughs> That's all I've got. Y'all enjoy today. Also, thank you, Amber. And also just remember, there's a lot of internet usage and uh, past president Barry has already given us a little warning that his internet might go out. Hopefully it does not, but if it does, he'll come right back on. So if there's any issues, just stay with us. We're going to get it fixed and we'll move on from there. And also you are being recorded. So just remember that whatever's going on in your background, it lives on forever. So thank you again for being with us today. On today's episode, we have past RI President Barry Rasson, who's an amazing speaker, an incredible leader. And honestly, he's an inspiration to us all. He's going to talk to us today about leadership through crisis. And it's a, a timely topic and we are very honored to have you with us today thank you for taking the time to be with us and we look forward to hearing from you shortly uh, we also are going to do our q a as we always do so after uh, president barry is done with his talk we will have our q a like amber said make sure to mark your questions clearly amber and i will be going through the questions to make sure we get to every question we possibly can bear with us because sometimes we run out of time if there's something pressing we will make sure it's answered offline uh, and then after that, we have some announcements of the next week's program, so stay with us. And then uh, Director Alex Susie will take her famous photo. We want to make sure to get that in as well, so stay in for that, because she'll take pictures of all of us on the screen, which is always awesome. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to District Governor Jim. Jim? Thanks again, Patrick. And I also want to welcome everybody that's, that is joining us here. As I do every week, I, my special guest is all of you Rotarians from District 5870. We started this Zoom series, staying connected, what, eight, nine, this is like the 11th or 12th one in the series. We started this for the Rotarians in our district so that we could all stay connected. 
and hopefully be inspired and motivated by these wonderful speakers that we've had, but mainly it's so that we can see each other. And, and I appreciate and am so thankful for all the, the folks from District 5870 that have joined us through the, uh, through the last few weeks and hopefully will join us through the end of the, the Rotary year. As always, we have some special guests that I want to acknowledge. First of all, I want to thank several of my district governor classmates, not only from Texas, but from various parts of the country. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. It's been a, a great year for us, a different year for us. And hopefully in the next few months, we can all get back together again and kind of reminisce on all our training times together. I also want to welcome Helen Reisler from the Rotary Club of New York City. Helen's become a regular since she's spoken with our club or, or to our district. Uh, what, it seems like a month ago or more. So Helen, thank you for always being a faithful supporter and being here. Uh, also joining us for the umpteenth time in a row is the president of Russell Hampton, Joe Beveridge. Uh, Russell does such great work for all of Rotary and we thank you for, for being with us. He's doing some work for us now on some special banners that we're getting uh, prepared that we'll talk about at some time in the future. So Joe, thank you for all your, all your help. Uh, and last but not least, our, our, our director, Rotary director elect Susie Howe. Susie, I'm not gonna be able to call you director elect much longer. So thank you for always being with us and the support that you're that you're giving to our district. And again, thanks for everybody that's been here because this is really a very special day. <coughs> Excuse me, as Patrick said, our, our guest speaker today is past Rotary International President, Barry Rasson, who's joining us from the Bahamas. Barry is a, a, a member of the Rotary Club of East Nassau in the Bahamas and he's been in Rotary since, since 19, 1980. Um, He's got so many awards from Rotary and held so many positions. You know, one of the, the things that I think he's probably most proud of is he's got the most prestigious award that Rotary gives out, the Service Above Self Award. But he's here to talk to us today about leadership. And Barry is really used to handling unexpected and stressful and crisis situations. He was nominated to be Rotary International President elect just two weeks after our friend Sam Awari passed away. He was only two weeks into his appointment as Rotary International President-elect. So President Barry had, had, had a year of training taken away from him, so to speak, uh, because he was thrown into that situation. And he, he did such a wonderful job in, in leading, our, and leading our organization in the last Rotary year as president in 2018-19. Throughout his Rotary journey, he's he's encountered so many crisis situations, but he has he has led Rotary through those and has emerged through those, so that Rotary is as strong as it is today. And we thank him for that. He's going to talk to us today about leadership in crisis situations. Many of you know that Barry is no no stranger to our district. He was, our, uh, he was our keynote speaker at our Rotary Foundation Gala in February 2019. And Barry, I got to tell you, everybody's still talking about those flamingos. So that was such a wonderful story and everybody still remembers that. So Past President Barry, welcome back to Central Texas and the stage is all yours. Well, thank you very much, Jim. Very kind introduction. And thank you, Patrick, for for your beginning introduction, I really appreciate it. Um, it's great to see, you know, I, I, I puzzle myself and scratch my head sometimes when I see the same faces listening to me over and over again. I, they gotta be bored to tears. I'm figuring it must be late at night in their place and they're looking for a way to get to sleep. Uh, yeah, Susie, go ahead, you can sleep. <laughs> hey, you didn't know I was gonna be on. Uh, Tom Gump is here and Reed Ashley and there's probably others, so uh, it's it's, that's what I love about Rotary though. You get to see your friends and in this virtual world, we get to see them a lot more often than we used to. Um, you talked about my internet, just to let you know, I've had my house rewired. I've had the, my, my service provider bring me an updated uh, extenders 
so I could reach further. He's now promised to bring me back a router that deals with a gigabyte so that he could do that and then change my extenders so that they all talk to each other. I don't know, I don't know what he's doing, but it seems to be working, um, which is a good thing. I was sitting in a very strange room the other night just so I wouldn't drop off, be right next to the router. So, but anyway, great to be here. Um, it, it's an interesting title you've given me is Disaster, uh, sorry, uh, Leadership Through Crisis. Uh, and it's true, you know, when my friends remind me, I've been through a lot of disasters or crises. Um, and when I got the honor of being president, they told me I was going to be remembered as the disaster president. I said, please don't repeat that. I don't want that kind of name on my name. But, uh, but it, it's true. And, you know, it's an interesting thing when you are in a crisis situation you have to think a little differently. You can't just be doing what you always do. Um, and I, I, you know, I was right close by uh, when you got hit by the hurricane um, and there was so much damage in Houston uh, to the point that uh, I went to Houston and met with all the, the governors to talk about what, uh, actually they wouldn't let me go to Houston, I went to Dallas and we met there. But we talked about what, what we need to do that's different. And, but to sit there, I, I still remember being in the boardroom in the hotel and the governors were talking about what they were doing. And I'm, I was thinking, how many organizations in the world do you have the leaders of your organization in this state sitting around a table telling me how they mucked out these houses, uh, get right in the dirt, clean it out, and not their houses, but people who needed help houses. And that's what you do. You know, to me, in a crisis, you step up and you do what you need to do. And that's why I love our organization, because we do that. And, and, and you don't even think about it. You just go do it, um, which is, is so nice. So, so right there in Texas, I was in there. And I've, part of what I've done in a lot of uh, disasters is set up accounts in, at the Rotary Foundation. Because, uh, you know, you kind of, you got to work your way. You've got rules to follow. But in a crisis, you got to wonder about which rules should be bent a little. Um, and it got to the point where I set up, um, they, they have this account, uh, a donor advised fund within the foundation. And I would continue using them for every disaster to the point where the Rotary Foundation has now banned me from starting any more donor advised funds. Uh, I find that amazing. Uh, it's, it's actually very comical. Um, so there's no more donor advised funds for disasters. Instead, they started a disaster fund to be used around the world. And part of that was, well, we're not a disaster agency. That's true. How many disasters do Rotarians help in? So I'm still helping um, give my opinion, if you will, on how they need to change the disaster fund so it actually works. Uh, right now, you can only get 25,000 per district to for a disaster. But then look what happened in the COVID-19 crisis. Rotary has pivoted and they've changed their leadership. The Rotary Foundation took a million dollars and dropped it into the disaster fund because clubs around the world were trying to do projects for the COVID-19 program. And wow, we turned fast. And that's a good, that's what you got to do in a crisis. You have to move at a very fast pace. You talked about when I came in as president, I'll, I'll never forget. I mean, you can imagine it kind of blows your mind that this organization would ask you to do such an, an incredible job. So I'm told at 4 or 4.30 in the afternoon that I've been selected at eight o'clock in the morning, the staff told me, we need your theme and we need it right now because it's, we're already a year late. Okay, what else do we need to do right away? And we just zipped through it and got it. Yeah, I mean, you, you just gotta make decisions and you gotta do them and you gotta do them quickly and you gotta think through them, but think through them fast. Um, and you've gotta work with the team around you. Um, you know, I, I think of the biggest crisis I was in, well, COVID-19 is probably the biggest pandemic, you gotta rank it up there but the earthquake in Haiti. Uh, I never forget getting that phone call one night when uh, the district governor called and said, hey, would you head up the relief efforts for the earthquake in Haiti? 
This is 10 minutes after it was on the news that night. And on the, on the bottom of the screen, there were, it, they didn't announce it, they just had a scroll at the bottom of the screen of the television that there's a tsunami coming from the earthquake in Haiti toward the Bahamas. Um, a tsunami coming to the Bahamas. Okay, my country is only three feet above sea level. A tsunami coming through the Bahamas means the entire country is covered in water. Um, so, you know, you start thinking immediately what's going to happen. Fortunately, there was no tsunami. That was uh, just a bad news story. But then you start working. And believe me, the, the team we had of Rotarians, who we didn't stop for about a year. It was just constant because you have to move quickly. And you have to look at what, what's the government doing? Okay, they, they had to close the airport, the airport doesn't work. Yeah, but I gotta get supplies into the people. No problem, there's a Rotarian who owns a, uh, this grass strip. So you don't have to fly into the airport. The, the American military took it over and they only let in certain groupings. Um, we weren't in that list, which was okay by us. So we had to take a small plane from Nassau every single day for 45 days. We would call to find out what they needed. And by the way, in a disaster, you gotta find out what people need and not just send them what you think they need. That's the worst thing we could do. So we would call every day, what do you need? Tonight, we put on a plane tomorrow morning before dawn, we get on a small plane and take about four hour flight. We'd, we'd gas up at an airport the south of the country. I'd never even been to my own, the island in my country before. We'd gas up there. I think the only thing on the island was a gas station. Um, and then we'd go into Haiti because they had no gas. And we'd land on this grass strip and we had to arrange for another Rotarian who lived in that part of the country to come by truck. We'd empty the plane into his truck and then he'd drive it into Port-au-Prince so he'd get to the people. So every single day, Rotary got supplies to the people who needed it in Haiti. And keep in mind, this crisis, 400,000 people died. This wasn't a small little thing. And a, a million people were disenfranchised and homeless. Um, some 40% of them were children. So we had to help. And, you know, and I think that's, Rotary reacts so well in the crisis. We really do. And every resource we have, we throw at helping the people who need the help most. So, uh, you know, one of the comical moments, if you can call it comical, was when we were uh, turning the airplane around to be able to take off and get out of there when by this was on fifth or sixth trip, the population had discovered that we were doing this on a regular basis and they kind of knew the time we were in. So they wanted to attack the plane and get any supplies we had. And we literally would just got out of there in time. Uh, and there was another time where we, as they were flying out, you could see the storm in front of us. How are we gonna go through this? Uh, but you know, you, you just do it. And you do it because you wanna help the people. Um, so you, you gotta think a little differently. Um, it was during that Haiti crisis where we realized we need help and we can't do this alone. So we let's ask for help. We turned to the Rotary world. Within days, we had donations from 60 countries around the world. Absolutely incredible. It still, still blows my mind. Uh, I also had to learn about paperwork because you know you, we, we, we did a lot directly. We did global grants, we did district, we did every machination of putting funds together to help them as we could. And I had to keep track of all this. Um, I'm, I'm really good on Excel now. Uh, so I showed somebody my Excel workbook one time. They thought I'd lost my mind. Um, it's like 200 Excel pages in one book. Uh, every project had its own page. You got to learn how to do it. You got to learn how to do it quickly because you want to make sure you can, when anybody asks, you can tell them exactly where every dollar went. Um, so, and that, that's part of the crisis that gets lost in leadership sometimes is that people say, whoa, um, you know, where'd that money go? Well, I didn't have time for that. You have to have time for that. You have to do what you do to make sure people know exactly what happened. What did you do? Where did the money go? 
and you had to watch carefully. Um, you know, what our philosophy was, we're not going to give you all the money for you, the, your grant. We're going to give you a little now. You send us pictures and a report, we'll send you a little more. And quite often we broke it into three, maybe four parts. And each part you had to show what you did and how you did it. We'd never done this before. This is brand new. We had to think up, how are we going to do this to make sure we hold them accountable to doing the project? And there was one that's, you know, at the time it was not comical, but looking back on it, it was. Uh, he was doing, I think he'd uh, put in a grant to us for 36 toilets uh, for this community because the community had been wiped out and they needed sanitation. So we proved it, sent him some funds. Uh, some time goes by, he sends us a report and he sends us a number of photographs. And you can't just say, okay, those are photographs. You gotta look carefully. Because when I look carefully, I realized it's the same toilet from 20 different directions. Uh, trying to say he's done all these toilets, but actually there's only one toilet he's done. Okay, so we closed them down and, and you know, moved on. But you gotta look carefully. It, you, again, it's, you really got to be aware that in a crisis, people do some strange things. So you've got to watch, you've got to be accountable, you've got to be very transparent. Um, so Haiti was quite a learning experience about all of that. And, and a big part of it is getting everybody working together on the same page. It, it's not just even a committee. I don't think we called it a committee. We just had a group of people who helped us with everything. Um, and we tried to balance it as well. It's very easy to go in the direction of the one on the ground who knows how to ask for things properly, then they get all the support. Uh, we tried to balance it with the 19 Rotary Clubs on the island of making sure they all got something for their communities to help the people in their own communities. Um, and we did have to start off very early on. What, what are our goals? What are we going to do? We can't just do everything. So we focused on the, the schools as our priority, which was great because we were able to rebuild 40 schools and put 29,526 children back to school. And keep in mind, in, in Haiti, they don't get fed unless they get to school. So you, that's part of the whole culture. Um, so a lot of learning experience there. Then this year, this is, you finish president, the idea is you get a year off, and then normally you come back as a trustee. And uh, I was thinking, well, they may or may not reelect me as a trustee, but I know at least I got a year off. Uh, then September 1st, we got hit by Hurricane Dorian, uh, another crisis. Hurricane Dorian, now I've been through 14 hurricanes and all you do is you close the shutters on the windows, some of your family come and stay with you, you have a hurricane party, a couple of days go by, um, you joke, you sing, you eat, you drink, you know, and, and it's a good couple of days. A little windy, a little noisy from the wind. It actually sounds like a train going right through your house. Um, but you, you get through it, and when it's finished, you open the shutters, you go out, you help people who might have lost a shingle. Trees are usually the biggest problem because trees are down. You gotta cut them up, free the roads, and, and you go about your business. Hurricane Dorian was different. Hurricane Dorian, within three days, grew from a category two to a category five, and actually was, Category five is the highest uh, category. It really would have been a six if there was such a thing as a six. Uh, 225 mile an hour gale winds, um, 190 mile consistent wind force. We build pretty well in the country, um, but and if this island had been hit, the country would be gone because this is the center of the economy. We were. The islands that got hit were our northernmost islands, and they got decimated. I mean, Abaco is still decimated, and the next hurricane season has now started. Um, so what do you do? Well, we immediately, and, and again, it was no planning for this, which is unfortunate, by the way. One thing you should do is plan for a disaster, because it's going to happen. But this was a different kind of disaster. We had plans for hurricanes. But we had to figure out what we could do with these poor people who were basically, they'd been traumatized, uh, 36 hours inside the hurricane, sitting on top of them, not moving, 
blowing their house away. People drowning in their attic because that's as high as they could go. Uh, people holding on to their spouse and finally couldn't hold on any longer and watch them wash out to sea. You have to deal with the individuals at that point, not just their property and their loss. You have to deal with the emotional side. So, you know, I talk a lot in, in leadership about emotional intelligence. And it, we, you really need individuals who have the ability to sit and listen and hear the stories of those who have been through that kind of trauma. Um, and I mean, September was a long time ago, but they're still affected. We had a Rotary Club in Abaco and there's only three Rotarians left on the island afterwards. Uh, and guess what? One of them has agreed to be the president for the starting July 1st. Um, even though there's, I think, now four on the island, uh, but he's going to rebuild. And we just discovered that he lost his business, he lost his house, and he won't let us help him. Um, you know, I, I admire that, but we've got to help him. So we're actually, we're going to arrange a day as soon as they open the border, we're going to go down there and help him get his own place back because we've got to help each other. You know, in a crisis, again, it's, it's you can't just help the community unless all of us are whole as well. Um, so you, you just have to do that. So then Rotary has to step up as leaders and say, okay, um, what do we do? Well, the first moment the water was calm enough, we sent a flotilla of 25 boats, small little speed boats, up to Marsh Harbor, pick up as many people as we could, bring them back here for shelters. And we just kept doing it. Uh, we, at the airport, the, the private airport, we brought everybody who was evacuating through the private airport and we had to bring Rotarians in with their computers and we did a registry so we could track everybody who came in. Um, you know, no plan. We just, this is, we sat down, so what do we have to do? And we did it. You got to think fast, you got to work fast, you got to move quickly and make sure you're getting things done. Um, and one of the stories, and that was a person from Abaco came up. She had nothing left. She was just clothes on her back, no shoes on her feet. Uh, we had a closed shoe store, by the way, who gave us all the shoes they had. So we could at least give those who got away some shoes. Anyway, she came in, got registered, went to a shelter. The next day she came back to the airport and said, I want to help. And she got on one of the computers and she started registering people as they came. I mean, you know, mankind, womankind is so strong that when it comes down to having a crisis, most want to step up and do something to help somebody else. Uh, and I admire humanity when we get like that because we truly do it on a regular basis. So Rotary has done all kinds of things in, in Abaco already um, in spite of our government. I hope our government isn't listening to me right now. Um, they've been hard to, to, to understand the depth of this. And they're really out of their depth, if you will. Um, and so you can't get frustrated by them. I mean, I, I honestly, I walked away from the minister, the new minister of the disasters uh, because just didn't get what needs to be done. You got to help the people down there. You can't be talking about process. Um, yeah, you need a process, but just do it, do something. Uh, these poor people have no food to eat, no place to sleep, no shelter. Um, and you don't let people go down there to help who are really just trying to make a buck out of it. And by the way, the international community were fantastic. And you need to know that. The government should have known ahead of time all of these agencies that were willing to get on a plane immediately and come and help and not hinder them at customs and immigration because they don't have a work permit. Um, you know, a good leader in a crisis makes those kind of exceptions. You want to come here and help, come help. You know, you, you, obviously you got to have integrity, but come and help. And you've got to open the door and allow that to happen. And over time, you kind of get your way back to, to some sense of normal. But then for us, along comes Dorian. Oh, my goodness. Coronavirus, uh, another disaster thrown to a group of people on those two islands who already, they have nothing, nowhere to go. What are we doing? Now, we've done projects. We've 
we got them technical assistance units, we got them engines, so fishermen could go back to, to uh, their doing some of the economy. Um, we've got all kinds of things, but with the COVID-19 problem and social distancing, we now got an issue where we finally got one grocery store open, but the people on the other end of the island were all piling into a truck to come to the one grocery store. So are we going to spread the virus? So no, we had to stop that. So we had, and again, you gotta, you gotta be creative. How do we help? The, the, the Rotarian can't help. They're, they're wiped out. And by the way, their bank is gone. So how do we deal with that? You, you can't get money to the borders are closed, but we found uh, a friend of ours, I say friend, he, he's stepped up and, and been fantastic. Uh, happens to be a nephew of somebody I know. And he's, he's taken a leave of absence from his life and he's living on a boat down there and he's just there to help. And he wants to do a complete assessment of the country when it's over. So it doesn't happen again. I mean, I, as a young man, this guy's in his thirties. Um, I got so much respect for him. But anyway, so I called, I said, what can you do? I know you need help with, with food because they can't get to the food store and back and, and not be at risk. So he said, no problem. I have got an American credit card. If you put money into my 501c3 in America, I can buy food and ship it over on a container. And that's what we did. We gave him, we, not just Rotary. Rotary put in 20,000. We had other groups. We sent him $100,000 for food. He put it on his credit card in Florida, had it shipped over. And by the way, you have to think also, does this young man know what food to buy? Um, I don't mean to insult him, but I know I certainly wouldn't. And I, you know, I just sent him a bunch of McDonald's Big Macs, but probably not the best nutrition in the world. So we got a nutritionist to work with him to figure out the best value and best nutrition so it, it could go as far as it can. Worked fantastically, it took him five days. We got him the money, he got everything shipped, and he did a great job. But again, you got to remember, is the $100,000 going where the $100,000 has to go? So he sent me the financials, and I know exactly where it all went. Uh, he did a great job. So now we're going to send him some more money so we can keep this going until we can open the island back up and get back to helping the individuals. Um, so, you know, it's, it's about, in a crisis, it's about, turning on a dime. It's about knowing how to pivot. And I got to tell you, I admire what Rotary has done since COVID-19. Um, and I know Susie knows a lot of this because she's heard me say it a couple of times. But the Rotary Board met online, first time in history. And they made some brilliant discussion and some good decisions as to what to do different. They decided we're going to have no in-person meetings for the RI Board or RI committees between now and December 31st. Oh, the trustees said, well, they're doing that. We need to be on the same page. We're doing the same thing. No in-person meetings. Um, done. Um, so then how do we get the job done? We do it virtually. Oh, and by the way, you know, if we could do this virtually, why didn't we think of this before? Now we could do it even more often than we used to. So my dear friend, Ravi Ravendran, has me meeting with him every single Friday morning, uh, every week. Uh, for the trustees planning next year when I come on as a trustee. Uh, but it's brilliant. You get, we've discussed so many key issues and our year hasn't even started. We've never done that before. Think different. Think about a crisis is the best time to look at as an opportunity for change. And clubs and districts need to be saying, saying the thing, same thing to themselves. What do we do that could make us more efficient and more effective in the future? So. In on that realm, what the board did is they set up a pandemic task force and they asked the pandemic task force to make some recommendations to the board by October, to make all the recommendations by October, we're gonna actually make some in June, but by October as to in this new world that we're living in, what tools should we develop for clubs and districts? So we need to help clubs and districts, but also what should we do different in the future? We've been doing clubs and district conferences and president-elect training. Uh, coming up as governor-elect training. We're doing this virtually. Can we do that in the future instead of going back to in-person? What can we do as a hybrid, maybe a mix, some in-person, some virtual? 
me think my district, we have 10 countries on 15 islands. And to go anywhere, you go to Miami first. So we spend, my district governor spends about $80,000 a year to visit the clubs of the country, of the district. Okay, imagine that. Uh, and believe me, that doesn't come from Rotary International. That comes from our dues, which probably aren't much more than your dues. So the district governor reaches in their own pockets every year. Uh, but nobody talks about it, nobody cares. That's just what we do. But imagine for a moment, why don't we do the club visits all virtually? So Rotary International is now looking at that as a program and they're gonna pilot that. And I asked them to use us as a, as a pilot district. Let's try it out and see if it works. Can we really reach Rotarians and motivate them as to what can be done? It's about thinking different, about create, getting creative, about taking the crisis when everybody is ready to do something different. How many people are on Zoom lines now that really hardly ever used a computer before in the Rotary world. I mean, you think about it, our, our average age in the United Kingdom is 69 years old. I guarantee some of them, this is new stuff. Uh, we did a survey already and we're finding out that some, I think it's 82% of the world is, of clubs are doing Zoom calls. My concern is what's happening to the other 18%. Uh, if we lose those, we're in deep trouble. Um, but we've got to think different. We've got to move forward. We've got to be aggressive with change. Uh, and now's the time to do it. I believe we can save significant money and still be effective as we were, probably more effective, by adapting to the virtual world. And by the way, if we get all the road actors to come into Rotary, and they know this digital world much better than most of us, they will move us up. I already had, when I met with Rotaract in Africa yesterday, that's what I love about this. I've been to South America, I've been to Africa, I've been to Europe, uh, Asia, all this week, and I never got on a plane. Uh, gotta love it. But when I went to Rotaract, uh, they said, well, why are you making us go on a rotary.org and look for stuff and the search engine's not really very good? Why don't you just have an app? We have an app here. That's how we follow all our Rotaractors, have an app. Totally. Why don't we? We need to do that. So I'm working on it, guys. I'm really trying to bring our organization into the, the new world. Uh, and there's a lot of us doing it. Uh, our pandemic task force, by the way, is chaired by Jeffrey Catteret, who is a fantastic director. And I think he's a perfect guy for the job. He, he understands the need to change. So we're going there. But listen, I've been talking a long time. I get passionate. I may never stop. So um, I'll, I better shut up. Um, thank you for having me. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, first of all, thank you uh, so much for sharing all of those stories. It's, it's, you know, what comes out, what speaks out to me is innovation, integrity, and relationships. That's what Rotary is. Yeah. And that's why we're the number one service organization on the planet is because there's not another organization that has the deep rooted relationships we have with that integrity and with the ability to think on a dime and innovate immediately. So. Uh, I know you've inspired everybody here to think, what can we do next? What can we do in this pivotal moment when Rotary has, I mean, Rotary is the answer and, and we can rise above this and make a lasting impact. So thank you for that. We're gonna start with our Q&A. Uh, if you have any questions, please mark them so Amber can see them. We're gonna go ahead and start first with uh, District Governor Jim. Jim. Thanks, Patrick. And President Barry, thank you so much. Uh, exactly what we needed to hear about why Rotary is so wonderful in what we do and how we adapt and how we per persevere in the, in the face of, of, of tragedies and, and in the face of crises all over the world. One of the questions that I like to ask and we like to hear about from, uh, from all of our speakers, and you've got so many Rotary stories and so many Rotary moments, but was there that one aha moment that after you became a member of Rotary that turns you from a member to a Rotarian. I'd love to hear your aha moment, if there is one. There certainly was one. And yeah, it happened probably two years after I was a member of Rotary. Um, I was community service chair and the president came to me and said that he had an individual who, is, this was in the early eighties, who she's in a wheelchair, She's got kidney disease. She's a diabetic. Uh, she need, but now she needs eye surgery. We can't do it locally. 
we need to get her eye surgery in Florida, uh, which means we got to fly there and um, just make, make the arrangement so we can get her the surgery she needs. Okay. Sure, what, what's my budget? You have no budget. Oh, okay. Um, I am scratched my head and then I had been given this big book called a directory. I said, well, let me call some Rotarians. So I called a Rotarian in a, in a I know there's a, the eye hospital over there. So I called one in that city and talked to the Rotarian. I said, explain the situation. I need to get this person surgery. Oh, no problem. We have a Rotarian who works at that hospital, Bascom Palmer. Uh, we can put you in touch with him. So within 30 minutes, he's calling me. Can you help me? Oh, yeah, no problem. We'll make all the arrangements. We'll waive all the fees. Just bring her over. No problem. But I need a doctor. Oh, yeah, I, I know a doctor in this other Rotary Club. Let me get him to call you. 20 minutes later, I get a call from this doctor, Rotarian. Yeah, no problem. I could do the surgery. Um, familiar with it. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Just get her over to me, and that's taken care of. I said, listen, uh, I, she's going to need a place to stay because it's outpatient. Oh, yeah, I know a Rotarian who runs the hotel nearby. A few minutes go by. This guy calls me. I understand you have a problem. You need some help. Yeah, I, I need this room for this mother, and the daughter is going to need to travel, so I need for the two of them. No problem. you got a room for free as long as you want it. I'm shaking my head. This is just blowing my mind. Um, now I'm thinking, well, i got to get them over there. So uh, I called the local airline here, explained the problem. Sure, two seats for free there and back. Absolutely, you got it. When do you want to go? Okay, now I'm thinking, okay, we gave them some spending money, they got food. So I gave them some spending money. No budget. Within 24 hours, we had her in the hospital in Florida getting surgery. That's when I knew what this organization can do. Because all you have to do is pick up a phone and call anybody in that directory, and they do respond. And it, it, it's, it's a miracle. We are a miracle as an organization. There is no other organization like us. I had the privilege of meeting with Kiwanis, Lions, and Optimist, uh, the president of those organizations. And I found it interesting because, you know, I'm being polite. I want to hear what they do. No, they want me to tell them about Rotary because they know what Rotary does. We are the number one, as Patrick said, in the world. And we've got to come out of this stronger than we ever were before, not weaker. We're going to lose some members. And we've got to be really focused on making sure we engage our members and we keep bringing in new members. So, you know, that's, that's my answer. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And thank you for that. Amber, you have some questions? I did. I had a, I wanted a personal question to ask. Uh, we've still got some questions coming in. Before I ask my question though, I had a great comment here that your nickname should be Nike, just do it. And I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> I had to share. That was from Jean and Syntex E-Club. So good job. <laughs> um, I, President Reston, I want to know how you were invited to Rotary. How did you? Well, wait, wait. Okay. I was, uh, I had just moved back home to start a, a hospital. I, I wanted to bring I worked at Mount Sinai Medical Center and I was just a number. I, you know, I couldn't really make a difference. So I wanted to come back home and bring modern medicine to my country. Um, so my wife, three children, two dogs, moved in with my parents, uh, $5,000 in my pocket. And uh, one day I was at the, and this is within two months, I was at, uh, at a, uh, a place where my kids were riding horses and I was sitting in the stands. I was actually the only one sitting in the stands watching and over to my right, there was this group of guys. I remember back then, this is before women in Rotary, so don't kill me. Uh, but there was a group of guys. They were enjoying they, they were up, They had the concession stand, if you will. And they had beers and they had hamburgers. And all I saw mostly was them drinking beers. Didn't see anybody buying anything. Uh, but they were having a good time. One of them came over and I recognize you. You're Barry Resson. You're building this hospital. Why don't you come to lunch with me? And I'm thinking... You, and you got to understand, I'm an introvert. I'm extremely shy individual, okay? Um, you may not see that, but that is- You've overcome thing. that. <laughs> yes, and Rotary got me through that. So I said, yes, I have to do this because I need to meet these people. I'm starting a new business. Um, so I went to the Rotary Club. In order to meet 
every member. There's the biggest club in Nassau. It's the most vibrant. And I, I went with the idea of I'm going to make myself do this. And I did. And, and they have developed me as a leader. I will, I, every time I get a chance, I thank my Rotary Club for making me the person who I am. I love that answer. I love that. Um, I think uh, Miss Susie Howell would like to ask some questions. Uh oh. I know. Get ready. <laughs> yeah. So, Barry, I'm guessing that you would like to invite every member of District 5870 to come to the Bahamas for either a project fair or vacation when the country opens up. That's my first comment. Actually, I can give you a quick answer to that. I have a volunteer program that I've organized and Rotary International is going to support me to bring Rotarians into Abaco to help us do projects as soon as the country opens up. So you're more than happy to come. We're going to plan for 200 Rotarians. All I'm waiting for is a place for them to stay. Well, more than that, actually. I'm waiting for toilets and showers, and then I can bring you in. So absolutely. Would, would you let us know when that uh, is online? And we would love to spread that through our uh, district and, and we would love to be a part of that. That's uh, probably a few months out yet, but I want to so, go. <laughs> so my second comment is you talked about the 18% that we're wor worried about that we haven't heard from. Uh, I'm recommending that everybody look left and right and who isn't on this call, who's missing, who do you need to contact? Because um, we don't want to lose anybody over this. Yep. And the third one this is why you need to live in Texas. Because of COVID-19, we now have margaritas to go. <laughs> exactly. That is a real no, thing. Awesome. By the gallons. <laughs> By the gallons. <laughs> and it's actually, I think it's going to help the state, actually. I hope we keep that. Um, it's so true. I couldn't Not imagine having, COVID. <laughs> having the liquor stores be uh, considered non-essential. Um, I have a question for you, and I know you've been, you've been, You've been talking already today about so many things we as Rotarians can do, we can be of action, we can show up. But what would you say to the Rotarian that's listening to this either right now or later in the recording that feels help helpless, feels their club hasn't met in weeks, they don't know how to use the internet, or they're, they just don't feel close enough to Rotary right now, and they're considering leaving the organization. What would you say to that Rotarian today about staying with us and moving forward? I would ask them to help us find somebody who is still engaged and ask them to help to keep them engaged, to keep them, to either teach them how, show them how, um, talk to them about what Rotary is doing. Uh, I, what Susie's point is extremely important. Each one of us need to call two to three people every single day that we haven't seen and ask them how they're doing. Um, and because the, we're going to, those fringe Rotarians are going to drop out. And we need to reach out to them because they're not necessarily that, that kind of individual isn't going to reach out to us. They're just going to kind of fall away. And too often they fall away and we don't do anything. So for them, though, I ask them if anybody like that is on this call, reach out to somebody on the call and say, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I don't understand how to do the Zoom. I don't understand how to keep accessing. I don't I, they've got to learn how there are folks right here who can walk them through it. But tell us, tell us if you got an issue. Tell us if you got a challenge. And if you do it one to one, then you don't have the embarrassment. A lot of people don't reach out because they're embarrassed. They think, well, they should know, but they don't. So avoid that embarrassment. Call one person that you trust, that you're friends with, you're in a rotary club, and get them to help because we love to help other people. That's so true. Patrick, yeah, go ahead. In the chat section, there's some discussion about how great Zoom is and it's keeping us connected, but that how it might be hard to keep deep connections in this type of virtual atmosphere. And I think kind of off of what the back of President Rasson was just saying, reach out to them, but also we can set these Zoom meetings up one-on-one, -on -one, three together. They don't have to be a whole club setting where we're all a lot of us are on here, we've got 81 people on here today and you're hearing four or five of us talk and that can be a little disconnecting. But you can set these Zoom sessions on one-on-one. -on -one. We've been working a lot in service projects in those smaller groups and I feel as connected as ever with my Rotarians that I'm working with closely like that. So I just wanted to point that out. So that you're, you're right on target as to thinking a little differently about how we use this to our advantage. 
And that's the kind of thing we have to do. What I like to do is have groups that are 25 or less, because I can see all 25 on my computer screen. My club, we meet 1230 to one for fellowship. Everybody has their microphones on and it's, it's chaos. And we have our meeting from one to two and then we stay there as long as anybody wants to chat. And it, I, I was amazed today we had, by the end of it, we had 65 people still there and nobody was signing off. They were still chatting. So you can keep those relationships going by not having people like me, but just having an open field to talk. I had Jeffrey Cataret as our speaker. I said, Jeffrey, you go away now. We, we just got to chat. And, and that keeps that, that friendliness and, and also do some things that I could tell you this crazy challenge my club is doing, which I refuse to do, uh, but it's a fundraiser. So I will donate because I refuse to do it. But they're having a challenge for every member of our club. We got 150 members in the club. Uh, you take a raw egg, a spoonful of sugar, and a shot of your favorite beverage. And you chug the, the egg, or raw, then the sugar, then the liquid. If you do it, you pay $20 too. If you don't do it, you pay $50. Um, I'm, I'll pay my fifty dollars. I'm not swallowing a raw egg. Pay fifty bucks. <laughs> but I watched ten people go live and swallow that egg and do the whole thing today, and that's, everybody was loving it. Wow. it was that's amazing. Fun. That's the best happy hour theme I've heard yet. That one's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> and I got to tell you, <laughs> some some of you that don't know this, but when we when we hang up, you know, when we're done with the meeting, there's a handful of people that are now a weekly. We hang on and we talk for. 50, we have to actually try to hang up after a while because we have to move on, but stay on, talk with us. You know, Don't just hang up when we say goodbye. Uh, talk to some people, I agree with you. This is a per, I feel more connected to my Rotary family now than I've ever felt because there's an opportunity to travel, like you said, anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere you wanna go. And so um, I would invite some of those who don't stay long or don't come in at all, invite them to that part of the meeting. Yeah. So they can really get to know each other again. Here's exactly. another I, I know. that is in the chat section here real quick. Jim, Barbara from Pflugerville mentioned that they took the list of their entire membership and just went by and highlighted who they haven't seen yet and then split that list up and made an effort between the club to reach out to those folks. And I that's think that's excellent. so important. That's, we've Good job, got Barbara. to engage. Yeah. And the I other think part also, of that, of course, is we also have to remember we got to bring in new people too. Yeah, I was going to okay. say that. And, and guess what? This this is an opportunity for those who said, I don't have time to go to a two hour lunch. I don't have the money to pay the, all these lunches. I don't, I don't want to go to a boring meeting. Bring them in. This is the time. Oh yeah, sure. I can do this. This is an opportunity to get people we might not have got before. Love it. Yep, Jeff, I, did you have something? Yeah, I, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I, uh, hopefully it, this wasn't my bad. I just over, uh, I didn't see the picture, but I do see joining us today is our Rotary International Director, Jarita Solari, who is here from California. Director Jarita, I'm sorry if I missed you earlier, but thank you so much for being with us. Is there anything you want to, to discuss while you have the floor? Well, let's see. What would you like to know about Barry? Oh, no. I oh, can tell, tell you oh, some tell stuff. Tell us, tell us. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? That may be that may be a happy hour discussion. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have Jarita, it's great to have you with us. Thank You've you. been here before and thank you for being here. I did want to also add, and and I know Jennifer Olson was on earlier. I visited the Rotary Club of Austin uh, a couple of times in their virtual meeting, one of our larger clubs. And before their meeting starts, they break everyone into various chat rooms, which you can do on Zoom. So they break everyone into rooms of, depending on how many people are there, five or six or seven, and they can talk to each other, how their week was gone, who they're missing and things like that. So some of our clubs, no matter what size you are, maybe if you have time at the beginning of meetings, you do that. You, you assign a chat room, and if you don't know how to do that, I'm sure Amber and Patrick do, I don't, but I'm sure they, they can help you with that. But maybe go to chat rooms and just three or four of you talk a little bit uh, among yourselves and get to know each other a little better and know who's missing. So that's another option within your larger club meeting to 
break it into chat rooms. Yeah, I find or, or, quite often we're not using Zoom to the extent we can use Zoom. There's a lot of features there, different types of Zoom. I think it's a webinar Zoom or whatever that you can do. We did our president-elect training. We joined with the 7030, so two districts together, which is 27 countries in the Caribbean, 160 some clubs, and we invited Rotaract to join us, so that's over 200. And we did our president-elect training, and we had 19 breakout rooms no. as we were doing it. And we had a little glitch or two, but for the most part, it worked perfect. But you're we're doing do, our club leadership training. An Amber and a Patrick who know what they're doing. Yeah, we're doing our club leadership training tomorrow, in fact, our district assembly, and it's being in that kind of format. Which reminds me, if you haven't registered and you still want to, you can still register for the club leadership training. I wanted uh, to give district governor like Rick Rick Stacy, but we're doing we're also using that. Jennifer, I think I heard you, Jennifer Olson of Austin. Did you want to comment? Oh, I was just gonna say, um, yes, this is Jennifer from Austin. And if anybody wants to reach out directly to me about how to use the breakout rooms, that is also fine. Yeah, and Thank I think you. the Georgetown Rotary Club is doing the same too. And so is Pflugerville as well. And I wanted to give Director uh, Jarita a chance to say what she said in the chat room because it's very important. Uh, Jarita? Uh, what I said was this is a great opportunity to look at every club's terminated member list for the last five years and reach out to them. We've done that in a couple of districts here and it is amazing what we have, what we found. In just one district, there were 3,000 terminated members in the past five years. 1,800 have reconnected. And they're thinking about starting a new Rotary Club online. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. This is a new, this is a new frontier for Rotary. This is a new chapter for Rotary. And I'm super excited about it. And I know that everyone on this call, you guys are innovators. You know how to get on here. You know how to be a part of a community that's online. And that doesn't mean, you know, as we've been hearing from all of our different speakers, you know, maybe your club meets three days a week, three uh, times a month, but has one virtual meeting a month to where those members that can't make it can still be a part of the club in the meeting. Maybe you have the dual, you know, Zoom, Facebook Live. We're here to help you with that. In fact, we're talking behind the scenes about doing a whole training just about the technical side of things uh, for anyone who wants to learn how to do that virtual uh, and in-person meeting. But there's, it's an exciting time. And, you know, past President Barry, you, you really are an inspiration. Thank you uh, from the bottom. I speak on behalf of everybody here. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for all you do for Rotary and for humanity. Uh, we're here for you guys. This is your, this is a, a district that cares deeply about your home country and we would love to help in any way we can. So please keep us posted. And if I can safely get to Bahamas cause I'm, I'm a high risk for COVID, I am there. I would love to be able to help in any way I possibly can. Um, and thank you for taking the time today to be with us. It really means a lot. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's so good to be with you all. I love your spirit. And thank you, Susie and Jarita for joining us. Although Jarita snuck in on me, um, but uh, thank you. And, and Jim, leadership so important. As your governor this year and your governor elect, got to bring our districts forward. So I think appreciate it. And I am going to run because Mexico is sending me notes asking me why I'm late. Go. Hold, hold thank for one you second. so much Susie. for your time, and we will we will take your words to heart. Thank you so and, much. And thank you so much. And Susie's going to take a picture of all of us. So Susie, you okay. want to go ahead and get I'm that? Right. Before Hang on, just a minute, okay. just a minute. <laughs> this is the Brady family, y'all. Okay, we got page one. Do you see my background? Yes, and I'm going to, to number two, page two. Oh, I see Rita. Page three. That's it. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, thank Barry. You thank you so thank much. Thank you, Barry. Be safe. Okay, so uh, that was an awesome program. Thank you all for sticking around and listening to that. It's just inspiring, and I look forward to everybody taking something from this today and, and making their community, their club, and Rotary uh, better for it. So thank you so much. Amber's going to share her screen real quick. We're going to show what we show every week. This is where 
everything lives. And while she's looking for that, I'm gonna tell you about next week's program. Uh, next week's program is we're gonna dedicate an entire hour to the PR Rockstar Challenge uh, that we, that Pam and Amber and I uh, came uh, with Jim and we, we decided well, let's do something to motivate clubs to be PR rock stars. And it was an incredible initiative that we worked on throughout the entire year. And we had a huge response. It was a huge success. We have clubs that have their own videos, rack cards, awesome things going on. And so we're going to dedicate the entire hour next week, not only to give some awards and some, some praise to all these awesome clubs, but also to sort of show you uh, some inspiration to do it yourself and to, to learn how to do some tips and tricks on it. It's gonna be a great hour and we hope that everybody comes and joins us next Friday. So uh, and we have some exciting stuff still to come after that. I wish I could announce the next week, but we can't yet because we're still working some logistics, but it's gonna be very inspiring and powerful. Patrick, so can hope, I say something yes, real quick? Go for it. The, uh, we're doing the Rockstar Challenge next week because as you know, our, our, our theme for our district conference was a, a celebration of clubs. And although we haven't had an official virtual district conference, really it's kind of been a district conference for the last 12 weeks because we've been trying to celebrate what Rotary has done and celebrate how Rotary has adapted to the situation. The next few weeks before the end of the Rotary year mostly will be about our district and how we are celebrating the accomplishments that we have. And the Rockstar Challenge was going to be presented at our at our district conference this year. And so we're doing it virtually. And there are other things that are coming up in the next few few weeks that, we, um, that we're able to do virtually that we were gonna do at the district conference. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you so much. And Amber's gonna show us quickly where we have all the past episodes. If you were not here last week for, for Vice President Dean's talk, I'm telling you, everyone on that call was moved to tears. Um, please go listen to that. And there's incredible uh, talks all on there. This is a great time to pop it up on Zoom, have it as a, as a, as a program for your club, or just say, hey, to all those Rotarians we're reaching out to that might you know, be feeling a little bit lost uh, in Rotary, say, hey, go listen to one of those, get inspired, and we, we love you guys and come back. So we just want to show you where that is. Also, this is where all of our district Zoom meetings are. So if you want to go uh, jump onto another Zoom meeting. Also, RI has its own Zoom list from all over the world. So you can go visit London, somewhere in India, somewhere in Asia. You can go anywhere in the world. Just go to RI and check out who's meeting at what time. Um, and with all that, is there anything else that I forgot? Um, DG, Jim, or Amber? See everybody tomorrow for club leadership training. Yeah. Not Early in the morning. It is not too late to register. And I know Amber's going to unmute everybody. So whoever wants to hang around and talk like we were talking about before, we normally everybody leaves us and there's uh, 10 or 12 of us that talk for another 15 minutes or so. I encourage everybody to hang around if you can. And you can just, it's your time. It's your time to talk and your time to shine. So yes, and so on behalf of so on behalf of everybody on this call, thank you so much, uh, Bear, uh, President Barry, for being with us, uh, Director and Vice President Elect Dorita. Thank you for being with us, yeah. and our very own Director Elect Susie. As always, thank you for all you do to support us, and thanks for being with us. And for everyone, all the District 58 to 70 Rotarians and all of our friends from all over the world, and any guests. Thank you for being with us today. Go have Thank a great you. weekend. Be safe and go serve the world. Thanks a lot. All right. Here comes everybody. <laughs> Y'all are all unmuted. <laughs> I hope. No, never mind. I actually muted everybody. Shame on you. I know. Everybody <laughs> unmute yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I think they took away that little... Do it the old-fashioned way. Do it yourself. Yeah. Do it yourself. Hi, everyone. <laughs> you guys. Hi. So proud of everybody that was able to be here. Thank you all so much. So proud of our district this Super year. Super job. It was I'm a great loving time. that beard there, Kent. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a beard off between. between we're gonna have to have a beard off between the two Kents, Bowles and Miller. I think so. Yeah, I'm getting close now. I'm. I'm we're about to take no, off too. Remember, I tried to put a picture of myself with Barry for my background. I see, it, Joan. It's. I think you have. 
I think you have too much light coming in. I think the light, and you need a, a kind of a background that's pretty solid. Okay. But I see it on be... top of, and I saw it for just a short minute when you had him up there. I saw it, and yeah. then it flashed off. Well, I don't know. It's weird. Some of the, hey, it's, it's camera hey, by Joan, camera. If it doesn't work in a little while, like in a couple of days, because we're going to be slammed for a couple of days, but uh, reach out to us and we can go through some, uh, there's some things that might have to do with your computer or the update with Zoom as well. There's a new yeah. update from Zoom. It, did you do that one just now? This yep, week? Yep. I've done update on yeah. Zoom. It's, I wouldn't it's work the either. setting on the processor of your computer. Hey, Michael, I my, totally agree with you. I miss Threadgills big time, by the way. Threadgills, Threadgills was a place, it, it got a little... Yes. Well, we're recording some good times the there but yeah it got a little bit bad for a while it went through a dip but that was one of my dad and i's favorite places when he picked yep. me up from the airport yep. because, amber you're still recording yep. i don't know if you want to be recording yeah, let's, let's, hey everybody say goodbye to the recording Bye. Bye.